On behalf of the Worldwide Church of Seventh-day Adventists, with over 21 million members in about 210 countries of the world, I want to say congratulations to this institution, uh, Félicitation, and in and in Swahili, which covers much of the East Central Africa division, Pong Gezi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Anyway. We are very honored to have His Excellency the President of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, and his wonderful wife to be with us today. Uh, we're also honored to have several authorities from the government, ministers, and uh, the mayor, the new mayor of Kigali, with whom uh, I shoveled dirt yesterday in Umaganda. <laughs> I also had the privilege of doing that uh, with the Minister of uh, Local Government and uh, with Minister Judith, who was with us. She was also part of our, our team. The <clears throat> meeting that we had that has been referenced uh, some years ago with His Excellency the President, that meeting was pivotal in what has developed to this extraordinary day in which we are experiencing right now. I can remember, uh, Your Excellency, that you were trying to urge us in a certain direction and I was thinking maybe, yeah, we can try to do something with a school of nursing and uh, see what we can do. But over time, and through the providence of God and through the facilitation of your office and this government and many other supporters, it has developed into a school of medicine. And it is a wonderful opportunity for the Seventh-day Adventist Church to accomplish this goal. Now, before you, you see many beautiful buildings. And some of you who have not toured the campus, you will have that opportunity uh, today. But beautiful buildings uh, are not to be minimized. But in reality, this is only the beginning because if one is to accomplish something in an educational manner, you have to have more than nice buildings. It's what happens inside the buildings. It was a privilege to be here three years ago for the groundbreaking of essentially four different buildings. And His Excellency, uh, Dr. Pennycook, well, His Excellency the President was shown by Dr. Pennycook some of those buildings as we walked here. And that was an eventful time three years ago, but now to see the reality is even more impressive because we know what God is going to do inside the buildings, and this is what makes the difference in Seventh-day Adventist education. I want to read in the book of 3 John, verse 2, one of my favorite verses. There's only one chapter in 3 John. It says here, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. This is the foundation, essentially, of a blended ministry an understanding that the physical and the spiritual are connected. Yes, the physical, mental, social, and spiritual. And this is the ministry of Jesus Christ. A blended ministry, comprehensive health ministry, working in conjunction with the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can never separate it. 
Just on Friday, I was taken on a tour by Dr. Pentecost and by Dr. Roger, uh, Pastor Hezron. We were touring different areas, and Dr. Pentecost made a very interesting point to me, saying that he never, ever wants the theology department, the school of theology, the training of pastors, to ever be relocated, never be relocated, from this hill because theology and medicine work together. A blended ministry, and this is following in the footsteps of Jesus, the master physician, who spent more time healing and teaching than he did preaching. Now, building a society through careful love and Christ's personal touch is what will distinguish this hill and this school of medicine and this university. Rwanda has been developing a special journey over the last 25 years. This is nicely explained by His Excellency himself in a quotation that I will read to you from an interview that was published in Time magazine of July 8 of this very year, just two or three months ago. And His Excellency said, 25 years on, we have built a stable society, a stable economy. We are developing. Everything is still a work in progress, but you can measure and understand where we have been and where we are now. Today, on the campus of the Adventist University of Central Africa and in the form of the School of Medicine, we can measure some of that progress, Your Excellency, and we praise God and we give Him the glory. Now, the real key to any true success is rooted in Jesus Christ and His complete ministry for us. This medical school, this theology department, this university, the work of Seventh-day Adventists throughout Rwanda, and yes, uh, yes, uh, not yesterday, Saturday, Sabbath, we had a wonderful meeting in Amahoro Stadium celebrating 100 years of Seventh-day Adventist presence in this country. And I want to tell you, it was a remarkable event and you would have been proud. You, you need to talk to some of the ministers who were there. It was a great blessing for us. But Seventh-day Adventists in Rwanda and this school itself is based upon what Christ has done for us and what he is doing through us. I want to read from the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. I read it from a modern translation of English called Good News for Modern Man. It's a beautiful rendition of the basis of every aspect of Seventh-day Adventist education, Seventh-day Adventist health care work, outreach, everything we do is based upon this. For you know what was paid to set you free from the worthless manner of life you received from your ancestors. It was not something that loses its value, such as silver or gold. You were set free by the costly sacrifice of Christ. My dear friends and Your Excellency, uh, Madam Kagami, all those here, what you see is as a result of the costly but free sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And might I add that sacrifice comes in different ways. And as we witness the evolving complex of the science building and the School of Medicine, 
Those of you who will be touring will see that it is named the Adrian Cooper Science Complex. Adrian Cooper sacrificed his life. We're privileged to have Paul and Philip and Andrew, three sons who are here today, and Anne, his wife, and also Dr. Lauren Hamill. We're delighted to have you. Symbols, just a little symbol of God's sacrifice that he paid for us and what others pay in return. May this hill, this university, this medical school exemplify Christ and his sacrifice for us, his free but costly grace. May this university and medical school make a huge difference for the people of Rwanda and East Africa as it ministers in the name of the master physician, Jesus Christ. May this university and medical school consistently lean with humility. Now, I'm going to make a little parenthesis there. You know, it's nice to look at these buildings. It's nice to know that we're going to be venturing into high-level medical science. Let me tell you, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters, never become so haughty, so mighty, so filled with yourself that you cannot humbly come before the master physician, Jesus Christ. I want to read, in closing, a beautiful quotation from a book called Desire of Ages. And may this be a keynote for those who will continue in this marvelous Adventist University of Central Africa and the School of Medicine and every other school, including the School of Theology. As activity increases, this is from Desire of Ages, page 362, a marvelous book, perhaps the nicest book on the life of Jesus Christ. And Your Excellency, if you do not have a copy, I'm going to make sure that you have one. It is a marvelous book. It says, as activity increases and men become successful in doing any work for God, there is danger of trusting to human plans and methods. Human plans and methods. There is a tendency to pray less and to have less faith let me tell you right now, what you're going to see today is really done by faith in God. Like the disciples, we are in danger of losing sight of our dependence on God and seeking to make a savior of our activity. We need to look constantly to Jesus, realizing that it is his power which does the work. By God's grace, may this seventh medical school of the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church be a place of restoration, of bringing people back to the image of God and in preparing them for Christ's soon second coming, all because of the free but costly sacrifice of Christ's grace for each of us. That is why this medical school will make a difference in the lives of people as they focus on the master physician and his blended ministry of reaching people physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually.